Welcome to part two of our series, Understanding the Scholarly Article. This segment is entitled, How are Scholarly Articles Structured? These articles, peer-reviewed articles, are structured generally in the same way. Not all articles will adhere entirely to this format, but this is generally what you would see. An abstract describing the article in whole, an introduction, literature review or theory section, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion, and then the bibliography and endnotes. And we'll explain each one of these sections in more detail. Consider, for example, this article from the Journal of Environmental Psychology. We see on the left-hand side all of the sections are listed, and they are links so that one can go directly to the literature review if one wants to. We also see that there is acknowledgments and also an appendix of supplementary data. The abstract is a single paragraph that describes and summarizes the article's focus, theories, methods, and findings. It will describe very briefly what the issue is and why it's important for theory and practice. It may explain the gaps or misunderstandings in the literature that the article is attempting to fill. It will describe briefly again how the research was conducted, what the findings were, and the conclusions. The abstract can include author-supplied keywords, which can assist you in finding similar such articles in databases. The abstracts themselves can, in some databases, be searched for specifically. You can confine your search just to the abstract, where all of this key relevant information is included. In the paper proper, it starts with an introduction that establishes the topic and the approach taken by the authors or authors. This may include the disciplinary history, in other words, why this topic is important to the field of study, and also a real-world history or relevance, in other words, why this re research matters to everyone else. It will then outline and map out the contents of the paper so that we can expect that any subheadings in the paper would correspond with what's set out here. Every scholarly article will include a literature review or theory section in which the authors establish that they have done their homework, they have familiarized themselves with the relevant literature from scholars who have preceded them. It will summarize what's been written about this topic before, what is known, what the gaps in knowledge are that this paper will attempt to fill. It will look at the different perspectives that have been brought to the field. Perhaps there are debates or controversies that the paper will seek to address. And it will establish the theoretical approach that's going to be taken in this paper. It, in essence, provides the paper's conceptual framework. The literature review may be in one section or it may be two or more, depending on the level of detail and variety of perspectives. We will be discussing theory further in the next episode in this series. The methodology section explains how the researchers are going to conduct their research. The methods can be quantitative, in other words, the use of data and statistics, or qualitative, more human-focused, such as interviews or focus groups or surveys. The methods might be mixed, so a bit of both. Perhaps there is a quantitative analysis of surveys. Or the paper may be purely theoretical in which the author or authors are analyzing, comparing, and contrasting different theories. The results or findings section will report on the result of the test, experiment, survey, interviews, or analysis that's been conducted. These results can be positive or negative. In other words, the hypothesis that was stated at the beginning of the paper may have been satisfied. The researchers found what they were hoping to find. Or the results can be negative, that the data did not support the initial hypothesis, but this can be significant too. But in the results section, the authors do not discuss what the significance is of their findings. This occurs in the discussion section, which analyzes the findings in light of theory. 
and draws conclusions from the analysis and perhaps acknowledging gaps or surprises or limitations. Finally, the paper concludes with a summary of the paper's argument, purpose, and findings with recommendations for further research directions. The bibliography or references will be a list in alphabetical order by author of all of the articles and books that were used in the preparation of the paper. It may also include endnotes, and these are explanatory notes going into more detail on some aspect of the topic that the authors felt might have slowed down the paper if they'd been included in the main body of the text. These can be included at the bottom of each page where they occur as footnotes, or they can be put at the end as endnotes. But the bibliography can provide you, as a researcher, avenues for further research, as you can then look up the articles and books that are cited. So that is the typical structure of an academic, peer-reviewed scholarly article, as opposed to something like a book review, which also will appear in a peer-reviewed journal. But as you can see, a typical book review is simply an essay. There's no abstract, there's no outline of, of headings, it's simply text. But what really sets a peer-reviewed article apart from something like a book review or an article you might find in a commercial magazine is the use of theory and conceptual frameworks. And this is what we are going to take up in the next segment in the series on understanding the scholarly article, theory and the scholarly article.